What you're about to hear is a recording from a college student who created an instrument, an instrument with bottles or mason jar bottles and balloons, a simple little drum set. And that's all well and good. However, the important thing here is to listen to what she recorded for the assignment. What makes this interesting and very illustrative for Gordon's music learning theory is that this young woman was not given any parameters, any guidelines, other than make a recording. She had to make a recording to show that the instrument actually makes a sound or made a sound. However, the rhythm, the rhythm that she played that she created extemporaneously, she improvised, however you want to define it, the rhythm was in paired phrases. Here's an example. Even without a formal paper and pencil test, even without a formal discussion, I know that this young woman gets it. She intuitively knows that phrases happen in pairs. Musical phrases happen in pairs. And as we know, if we analyze what she's done, two bars, essentially, it doesn't really matter, but we'll say it's two bars long, in duple time. Music happens in pairs. There can't be one of something. There must be two. And if there are two, there must be four. And so on and so on. This is a perfect example, a perfect example of the exponential quality of music. Rhythms grow exponentially. Rhythmic patterns. We have a pattern of one measure paired with a second. We have a pattern of two paired with another pattern of two. And so on and so on. Listen one more time. One of the strongest points that Gordon makes throughout advocating music learning theory is that you begin from the known and you go to the unknown. It's simply good pedagogy. How this person was acculturated to this particular idea that phrases need to be paired, probably from listening to the radio. So much of what children learn about music happens by simply experiencing it. The point is, if we know this is where this particular person is, then this is where we should start. When we're presenting rhythms, I argue, we should present whole patterns. Whole patterns. Whole two-measure patterns. Whole four-measure patterns. Whole eight measure patterns, the whole enchilada. And once they become used to and anticipate, predict that an antecedent is paired with a consequence, it's so much easier to label it.